So a couple years ago, I sort of started to have this renaissance with country music, especially when it pertains to like guitar playing and just what I appreciate myself. And it was a very weird scenario for me, especially when it comes to the fact that I had spent a lifetime just running away from country music. I hated it. I wanted absolutely nothing to do with it at all. All. So as with a lot of things in life, my perceptions on the genre very quickly began to change, and all of those changes had one very simple catalyst. His name was Keith Urban, or is Keith Urban. You see, my friend and roommate at the time had gotten word from his older brother, who is a guitar player that we both very, very much respected, that he had seen one of, as he described it, the most dynamic guitar performances that he had ever seen in his life. And it was from Keith Urban's live performance of Stupid Boy, which is, I believe, to be one of his more popular pop country tracks. And of course, I said to myself in the moment, I have to watch this, like, right now. So that's what I did. And it was just wild being in the moment watching that YouTube video. It's one of those things that I really remember, just seeing him do all these like crazy hammer-ons and pull-offs, and it was a really cool vocal performance, like instantly just recognizable that this dude's talent was just at a different level, and he's walking across this big stage. But there are two sort of things that I really instantly began to recognize. The first of which, of course, was his actual guitar tone, which I was like, this is kind of stupid. Like hearing him just solo was one thing, like the licks were next level, he's an incredible guitar player, but hearing the actual tone, that's what sets people apart in my mind sometimes, and his tone in that moment was just ridiculous. But the second thing that I noticed was actually the real thing that got me very intrigued. You see, it wasn't just the tone that he had, but it was where he was actually getting the tone from. I noticed, because I had been playing for a year or two, that he had a Les Paul, and at the time, I had a Les Paul. I had this LPJ, I believe it was, with black humbuckers. I thought it was really cool, and I thought I could access like the emo stuff that I never got to experience as a kid, because I wasn't listening to that type of music, but the difference that I noticed was actually that he was playing a Les Paul with a single pickup. And it didn't look like the humbuckers that I had been told about from my friends, so I was like, this is really interesting, what is this thing? You see, friends, this was not a Les Paul. And from what I was told by my friends and by the internet, it turns out to be this thing called a Les Paul Jr. Now, like I said, it was a very strange concept to me, and I didn't really know what I was dealing with, and I think that's because as a guitar player, there had been one thing that I had always been looking for in a guitar, one simple word, and that word is versatility. You see, I'm sort of obsessed with the idea of one size fits all. What's the guitar that can do the most for me in the moment? What is the one guitar? I'm not a touring rig or anything. I probably never will be with my skill level, but like, I wanna know what's that one guitar that I can bring to a gig and I can use just that thing, and that's sort of been the reason why I chose the guitars that I've chosen. Even when it comes to a Les Paul, something where in way more recent years I've thought to myself, this thing is way more more versatile than I sometimes give it credit for, I look for how many different things that one guitar can do. So the idea of only having one bridge pickup in a Les Paul meant to me, you can only do one thing. One thing, that's it. But if that's the case, why have I seen this guitar used in so many different genres and different styles? Like why is it so popular if it's just this one trick pony like I was thinking it was and it just kept rattling and rattling through my mind and I was like, okay, okay, stop right there. Let's figure this out. I think everyone has their thoughts on like different guitars and different companies. and I. I definitely have my thoughts, but I try not to make like super definitive statements just because like I don't necessarily know enough to know what I'm talking about all the time, but I will say this and this alone. I think that Gibson has definitively the best new case smell when you open it up for the first time. So let's do it. All right, so this is a very big moment for me, and it's not just because it's like new guitar day or whatever the kids are calling it nowadays on TikTok, but because this is a guitar that's unlike one that I've owned before. Like I said, having just the single pickup in there is a very different dynamic challenge for me. And I even just upon opening it, I had to contact some friends because I was like, please teach me. I still don't know what I'm doing. How am I going to be able to do this like just versatility wise? And my friend Andy gave me some crazy good insights. You're in full on bridge pickup territory. I mean, it can sound like a single coil. It can sound like a humbucker. It can sound dark. It can sound bright. It's like a you really could do just about anything. If you wanted to, you could play jazz on that. It would work. So when first talking to Andy, I was a little bit frustrated because he didn't tell me what I wanted to hear, but I guess that's what good friends are for, right? This guitar is not exactly what I thought it was. Just dynamically, it's different than most things I've ever played. You see, I've heard a couple YouTubers talk about it, like Rob Baker, and I remember that YouTube video with Joe Bonamimosa. Is that the name of that guitarist? 
Just kidding, Joe, you're one of the best on the planet. Where this man goes specifically into not just the Les Paul Jr., but the Les Paul just in general, talking about the volume and the tone knob and how you can get from clean to dirty, you can get a variety of tones, saying that you don't have to touch anything on the floor, not your pedal board, not your amp, not anything, and you'll be able to get all the tones you need just out of a Les Paul. And that is even more true when it comes to the Les Paul Jr., because you don't even have that neck pickup to go to. This is where I really have to start putting my money where my mouth is, right? Because I have the guitar right here, and I have it plugged into a Princeton, so a fairly clean amp. This isn't some huge Marshall stack. If I were to just do what I usually do and set the volume at 10, tone at 10, there would be no clean tone. The volume's on seven right now, right? <laughs> Oh my goodness. So unless you're a metal player, I wouldn't necessarily call that a clean tone. That is breaking up pretty hard. And like I said, I'm going out of a Princeton at about seven, and I think on most guitars that you'd probably still get a little bit of breakup, but not as much as I'm probably getting right now. So if I want to do what I want to do and get a clean tone, I'm going to have to actually play with the volume knob, which is something I preach a lot, but not something that I really put into practice because I feel like a lot of people know the thing. And it's a really big thing that, like I said, I preach a lot, but I don't necessarily practice. Practice. Tone is more than just about the specific guitar you're using. Tone is in the velocity of your picking. Tone is in the volume knob. Tone is in the tone knob, the reason why it's there. So if I actually wanted a clean tone. All I gotta do is roll the volume back up. that's the thing, man. I'm a funk guy. I love the funky stuff for years. And I mean for years. One of my favorite pedals on my board, without question, was just compression. And I mean setting it as heavy as possible, which may or may not be the greatest thing ever, depending on what you need. But I'm really not used to worrying about dynamics, especially when it comes to my picking amp. You just get what you get with the tone coming out of your amp, but that's not how this guitar works. So I think this guitar can essentially teach me a lot, but it'll take a lot of frustration to get there. That if you take this junior and just play play it and only it and try and get all your sounds from it for like two weeks you will exit that experiment as a i mean the first couple of days are gonna suck but you will exit that experiment as a much better player than you were going in so yeah dynamics wise it's just weird thinking about like for the first time where my picking hand is actually going but also in like mixes when i'm producing i think it's really cool because i've been working on this track it's like an acoustic thing and to be able to put it like in different places places and just to sit here and just play with the volume knob without having to move any of my amps or my pedals that was really cool but really also hard because back to the dynamics thing it became where I was placing my hand how hard I was picking like my friend Andrew was saying there's really no hiding when it comes to this guitar All right, so getting used to this guitar is going to be a pretty interesting thing. Like I said, I liked all the tones coming out of it. It does have a fat neck, which I have liked like different amounts at various times in my life, but that's besides the point. That's usually just what you're getting when you're getting a Les Paul. I think the moral of this story, if you haven't concluded it already, is that this is a guitar that I think is going to really, really test me, test my capabilities, test how I use dynamic, test just what I can do with as little as possible. It's kind of like those 60s things, like Eric Clapton, when he was just shredding, didn't have this full pedal board. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, like sometimes you need that. But how are you going to sound when you rip it to the bare bones, when you just have guitar going through amp and a volume and a tone pedal? How are you going to make that work? That's the question that I'm really asking myself right now. Where can I go from here? And I'm excited to find the answer to that if I can, or to see if I'm just not up to the challenge. But anyway, I want to know what you think. Let me know what you think of the Les Paul Jr. Have you played one? Have you tried any one pickup guitars or like what have you learned about dynamics from using this bad boy right here? Thank you so much for watching. It was so much fun to be 
able to like take a look at the Les Paul Jr. Tried a different style of video today. Let me know if you liked it. Let me know if you want to see more of this style. By the way, if you want to know anything more about the Les Paul Jr. or any of the gear that I used in this video, I got it all from Sweetwater. It's one of the best ways to support the channel. Or if you're just curious about any of the other gear or any of those tones, make sure to check out the links. Like and subscribe if you had a good time. And most important, like most important of all, have a fantastic day. She never even had a choice.